Based on the high-budget, A-list casted, but somehow still terrible Warren Beatty movie, featuring a rich lineup of Al Pacino, Dustin Hoffman, and Madonna, Dick Tracy on the Game Boy is a North American exclusive. I feel no upset about that decision either. Where the movie was just weird, with over-the-top prosthetics and gaudy colorizations, tongue-firmly-in-cheek acting, and what may just be the most overspent Hollywood creation of all time, the games that came out were awful for different reasons. The Master System game was okay, but then Sega tended to be a little more scrupulous with what they put out than Nintendo in the 8-bit era. No danger of wasting top dollar with the NES and Game Boy games. These reek of shoestring tie-ins and resulted in rushed, untested messes. The Game Boy game is a semi-playable platformer at best. As in the movie, based on the synopses I've read, I can't get past the first 20 minutes myself, you play as the eponymous Tracy, on the hunt for evidence about the dastardly plans of Big Boy Caprice and his gang. There are five levels, and in the first four, you need to find 12 pieces of a shredded up photograph, which will reveal a hint to the detective of which mobster to go for next. At the end of each level, you can rearrange the photos within a short time limit, which if you manage to do, you can earn extra lives. There are lots of goons all over the place, to the point where some sections are unpassable without taking damage, and at the end of each level is a boss based on one of the ugly freaks from the movie. While the game does not sound all that pleasant, it's okay but it won't impress anybody, it does look rather great. The cutscenes are beautifully drawn, maybe that's the wrong word, and really capture the hideousness of the mobster characters excellently. In-game, everything is of a good size and clear, and the level details, while not hugely varied, fit the atmosphere. That's unfortunately where my compliments end. You won't enjoy this game, I can virtually guarantee that. Right from the off, you'll notice how badly the hitboxes are programmed. You start with no weapons, engaging in fisticuffs with the goons you come across. Thing is, there's apparently one pixel that you can stand on and hit the enemies without taking damage yourself. One pixel to the right, you're getting hit. One pixel to the left, and no contact is made, despite your character's fist clearly going through the bad guy's face. You can be crouching on a crate or something with an enemy below you, and despite the fact that you're throwing a punch at least a head's height above him, a hit still registers. I can't think that anyone tested this out, because surely that would have been picked up. When you finally get weapons, it's a little better. Ammo is not infinite, but it needs to be collected. And aside from the handgun, you can also find a Tommy gun, tear gas, and grenades. These last two are probably the most useful, as they have an abnormally large blast radius and can take out multiple enemies. The bosses are possibly the most disappointing end-level fights in platforming history. They're nigh impossible if you don't have any weapons, but if you do, then you can just unload on them and they won't even attack you. A really cheap game mechanic that's overused to the point of complete redundancy is the falling block problem. If you see any open window, you can guarantee that a safe or an anvil is falling out of it. If you walk under a light bulb, it's falling down on you. I don't know who rigged these bulbs to drop when Tracy walks under them. I don't even know how you'd make light bulbs that can discriminate a detective from an everyday goon. Crates materialize from nowhere and drop on you. It's really dumb and gets tiresome pretty quickly. Seriously, the film was a letdown at the box office, so I don't know why I imagined this game might be any good. I mean, just think of the heights that Madonna's fledgling acting career could have reached if she wasn't tarnished by this. Yeah, maybe... no. An actress she was not. Maybe the game mirrors the film more than I originally thought. So much effort was put into the imagery that the substance is an absolute car crash.
Thanks so much for watching this video. The Kickstarter for the book is now live. Check the link in the description for how you can back the project and be the first to get your hands on the Portable Power Encyclopedia, featuring more than 900 Game Boy game reviews and a whole wealth of useful information on the world's favorite handheld console. See you later on.